This is ProBlogger. My name's Darren Rouse and I'm the blogger behind ProBlogger.com, a blog, podcast, event, job board, series of ebooks and courses all designed to help you to start a great blog, to create some amazing content that will change your readers' lives and to build some profit around that blog too. You can learn more about ProBlogger and all that we do over at ProBlogger.com. Now, in today's episode, episode 222, we're continuing our series of blogger stories, where I'm handing the podcast over to you as listeners to tell your stories and to share some tips of starting and growing your blogs. This series started yesterday with the story of Brittany Bailey, a DIY blogger who grew her blog to hundreds of thousands of readers a month, and you can listen to that and hear the introduction to this series in episode 221. And today, I want to introduce you to two bloggers, two tech bloggers, both of whom whose blogs enabled them to leave their real-world desk corporate jobs to start their own businesses around their blogs. We're sharing these stories and tips in the lead up to our Start a Blog course, which launches in the second week of January. So if you've been thinking about starting a blog, this free course will walk you through how to set up that blog with good foundations for building not only a useful blog to your readers, but also good foundations for building a profitable blog. You can get notified of when this course goes live by signing up over at problogger.com forward slash start a blog. You can also find a link to that in today's show notes where I'll also link to our two bloggers of the day over at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 222. Creating great content. Finding an audience. Building engagement. Monetizing your blog. This is ProBlogger. As I said at the top of the show today, I want to play you two stories, both of which are from tech bloggers who started their blogs in the last four years and both of whom have grown their blogs to a point where they've been able to give up their previous corporate jobs to become full-time bloggers, which I know is a dream of many listeners of this podcast. I decided to put these two stories together today because there are some real similarities and I know also that there are many of you who are our listeners to this podcast who blog about these more technical things and so I thought putting these two together will give you a couple of examples of the kind of blogs that have done well. The first blogger that I want to introduce you to will be familiar to many of you. Uh, it's Paul Cunningham from practical365.com. Those 365 are numerals, 365. Paul will be familiar to many of you who are part of our Facebook group because he's a regular contributor there. He's also written at least a couple of articles on ProBlogger as a contributor. His most recent one was a really popular post on how to create an efficient contact page on your blog, and I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Paul has also been to many of our Aussie events as well. And so when he submitted his story, um, which I found really interesting to hear, even though I've met Paul so many times, uh, I wanted to include it. He's an Aussie, so you're going to hear a different accent today, or not different to me really, although he's from a northern part of uh, Australia, and I hope you'll find his story interesting. I've got another Indian blogger coming up after Paul as well, another technical blogger, so I will be back to introduce him in a moment. Hope you enjoy Paul's story. You're listening to Pro Blogger. My name is Paul Cunningham. I run the practical365.com website, which is a blog focused on the topic of Office 365 cloud services for IT professionals. I started blogging over 10 years ago. In fact, uh, my very first blog posts are still on my blog at practical365.com today. I originally started blogging because I was noticing some of the people in my industry who had their own blogs and I was finding their blog posts when I was searching for solutions to problems. And up until that point, I was active in various forums and online communities, but I was becoming aware that my efforts in these forums were not translating to any real-world benefit to myself. Uh, It still felt good to help people, but being in the IT industry, which can be quite volatile at times, As the economy rises and falls, I wanted to do something that more directly boosted my job prospects, so I basically figured that I should start a blog, just like those other people that I was noticing who had built up name recognition in the industry through their own online writing, and I also figured it might be a way that I could earn a few extra dollars 
to go towards things like traveling to conferences in my industry, uh, buying a laptop, getting some nice Christmas presents for my kids and that sort of thing. I think in hindsight, the fact that I just stopped messing around with different blogging software and services and just settled on WordPress and started writing was the first good move that I made. Um, WordPress wasn't the obvious choice back then. It's not like today where WordPress is kind of the de facto blogging platform, but it turned out to be the right choice for me. And ultimately, it was more important to just start actually blogging, not messing around with all that technical stuff anyway. The other good move that I made, which in hindsight was probably the best move I've made as far as long-term impact goes, was rebranding my blog and settling on a particular technical niche that I really went deep on. And I rebranded to a good name that mixed branding and keywords, and so that was good for SEO. And I got a nice simple logo, and I made it professionally made, and I invested in a nice uh, professional premium WordPress theme, and I think that just really elevated the overall appearance of my blog as an authority site uh, rather than just be some guy with a blog sharing his random thoughts online. As far as mistakes go, most of the mistakes I've made have really been about being me being overly cautious or too slow. Um, I should have started my mailing list sooner. I know we all say that, but that, you know, that didn't really sink me. It just set me back a little bit. Uh, I should have launched a product sooner, um, even though, you know, I finally did. It wasn't, I was still able to have success from it. So they weren't career ending blogging mistakes by any stretch. But when I did find success in different areas, I was also guilty of not aggressively pursuing those channels to really maximize them. And part of it was caution and part of it was just juggling uh, a blog with a full-time career and a young family. And I probably could have gone full-time with my blogging sooner than I did, uh, but I was being a bit cautious about it. And in the end, it still worked out okay though. There's been a lot of good things that have come from starting my blog. It's certainly became easier for me to find jobs, which was good because Most of my jobs in IT ended due to companies outsourcing my team or going bankrupt or mergers and acquisitions and downsizing and things like that. So uh, I was regularly out there looking for new jobs and being a little bit known in the industry certainly helped me along in that respect. Uh, I've also spoken at overseas conferences. You know, that's been a lot of fun. I've met a lot of great people and traveled a little bit and seen some interesting places. I got some recognition from Microsoft themselves through what they call their MVP program, which stands for Most Valuable Professional, which is their award to people like myself for our contributions to the IT community. And there's some benefits that come from that as well. It's not a paid award by any stretch, but you know, you get some nice sort of insider news and, and access to Microsoft through that award program. I've been able to write and self-publish uh, ebooks. Um, I also landed a book deal with a traditional publisher. I was, had my first traditionally published book in 2016. Uh, and I also do some contract work creating training courses for one of the leading online training companies in the IT industry. They're called Pluralsight. And all of those benefits and revenue streams, as well as the income that I've been able to build from affiliate commissions and advertising on my website, uh, and some private consulting and things like that has what's really made it possible for me to quit my full-time job a few years ago. And, you know, ultimately that's meant a lot more freedom in my life, uh, more time to spend with my family, be more present for our kids, do more at home and help my wife out a lot more and allow her to pursue her career uh, a lot more than she was able to when I had a full-time job. My number one tip for new bloggers aside from being patient, because a lot of this success takes time to build up very slowly. Uh, My number one tip though would be to use your blog to answer as many simple and small questions as you can. Uh, The blog posts that you write that solve all those little problems, they're not going to be blockbuster, you know, traffic posts that draw in millions of visitors a year. They're not going to go viral on Facebook and Twitter but they will help the people who need help the most, which is the people who are beginners in your area and your topic and your niche. Uh, Those people have lots of small, simple questions that need small, simple answers, and you're the person that's going to help them because you've got that information right there on your blog, and those people will become your most loyal fans as your blog grows along with them. Creating great content and building your audience. This is ProBlogger.
I love those tips from Paul. He is a great example of how niching down into a really specific topic is powerful. You don't have to do all things Microsoft. You don't have to do all things tech. You can become the go-to person in a particular niche kind of uh, product or suite of products. Uh, And that can be very powerful to be that number one person or or one of the main people talking about that uh, very specific thing can be a good thing as long as that thing isn't going to go away. Our next story is another brilliant example of that. I also love that Paul went through some of his different income streams there. Uh, His blog has enabled him to um, uh, do a number of things there. He's self-published eBooks and sold eBooks. He's written a traditionally published book and had income and royalties from that. He's done contract work, creating training courses. Uh, His blog has enabled him to get the profile so that people um, would hire him to do that type of thing. He's um, done some affiliate promotion and and earned commissions that way. He's worked directly with advertisers and he's also offered private consulting and coaching. And this is very, very typical. And you've heard me talk about this before. In, in fact, back in episode 153, I talk about my own journey from being a hobby blogger to being a full-time blogger and how I made that leap through a variety of income streams as well, some of which um, are the same as what Paul's done. And this is, this is what I hear again and again from people who make that leap to full-time is they have all these different income stream. So if you're thinking about starting out, you might have one income stream in mind. I challenge you based on on Paul's story to think a bit broader than that. Look at what other bloggers in your niche are doing and uh, pursue maybe two or three different income streams uh, to to get you to that full-time level faster. Lastly, I love that tip um, that he finished on there is, uh, you know, building your blog around solving lots of little problems and answering lots of little questions. It is the accumulation of those answers and solutions that are often what makes a blog successful. Um, Now, I want to introduce you to our next blogger. Uh, This is Sumit Bansal from TrumpXL.com. Now, that might sound a little bit like a political blog. It is not. It's a blog about Microsoft Excel. So you're already seeing a bit of a similarity here with both of our bloggers today are Microsoft bloggers. Um, But I wanted to feature Sumit's um, advice and story as well. Sumit's from India, so a different part of the world. Again, we've got lots of readers from India and uh, countries around uh, India as well. So I want to welcome Sumit. It and uh, I will wrap things up after his story as well. How to build and monetize your blog. This is Pro Blogger. Hello, Darren. Hello, team. I'm a huge fan of problogger.com, the blog and the podcast. I've been following you guys for more than three years now, and I have learned so much from you. So a big thank you for all the work that you do at problogger.com. My name is Sumit Bansal and I'm from India and my blog's name is Trump Excel and the URL is trumpexcel.com. That would be T-R-U-M-P-E-X-C-E-L dot com. I started Trump Excel in May 2013 and I was working with IBM at that point in time. And I started this because in my work, I was using Excel spreadsheets a lot. So I used to work with a lot of data and I was learning a lot of new things in Excel. So I started this blog in an effort to share what I was learning every day. And it was also helping my team then. So a lot of people, my, a lot of my colleagues would come up to me and ask the same questions again and again. So I thought maybe I would write tutorials so that these guys can simply refer to those tutorials. And I can also then share it on my social media or other people online. So with that thought, I uh, created a Blogspot account and I, uh, I started writing and when I had written 10 tutorials, then I thought that this is something that I was enjoying. This is something that I wanted to do uh, as a long term thing. So I registered a domain name and got the hosting and started this in May 2013. And uh, when I started this, my objective was very clear. Uh, it was to help people in uh, in doing things in Excel and uh, share what I was learning every every day. And at the same time, I also hoped to make a little bit of side income, something that would supplement my full time income. And to be honest, at that point in time, I had not thought that I would be able to leave my full time job in IBM and would be able to work on my blog as a full time gig. But that happened in January 2015. I was able to leave my job and now I work on my blog full time. 
Now coming uh, to the things that I'm really grateful for when I started this blog, uh, there are actually two things. Uh, and let me quickly also share a short anecdote with you. When I uh, wrote my first blog post, and that was uh, 10th May 2013, uh, I also shared it on uh, my social media accounts. And uh, uh, I'm a little bit of an introvert. So it takes a little bit of effort and courage for me to share stuff on my personal social media accounts. I'm not really active on my personal social media. I am through my, my Trump Excel um, accounts, but not in my personal accounts. So I shared my first blog post on Google Plus and Facebook. And the first comment that I got on Google Plus was uh, really you found that worth sharing. And when I read that comment, it really broke my confidence. At least at that point in time, it broke my confidence. I felt sad. And at the same time, I felt really, really angry because the person who had commented did not consider uh, the effort that had gone into writing that blog post and the uh, courage that it had taken me to post this on my uh, social media accounts. And that person completely trashed it. Uh, so after 15 minutes, I really could not come up with a response to that. So I simply uh, replied uh, with a yes and I moved on and I did not stop. So the first thing that I'm really, really grateful is that I did not stop. And had I uh, taken that feedback, had I stopped because I only had a Blogspot account then, I may not have reached where I am. I, my life would have been really different. So it's it, I'm really grateful that I did not stop then. The second thing that, that I'm grateful for is that I created a YouTube channel and I thought that uh, since I'm writing blog posts, I'll also create videos for my audience. And that led to a lot of traction of my blog. I right now have close to 18,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And it also made me realize that I can be a very good teacher and uh, that has become my superpower. It's my superpower that I can really dump down stuff and teach it to people, which also led me to create more online courses. So I really just created a YouTube channel because I uh, thought it would be nice to share it with people and, and share a video of what I was writing. Uh, but in the hindsight, I think that was a great, great thing that I did and it has really helped me. So I'm grateful for that as well. Now coming to the mistakes that I made and I would advise others not to make, especially new bloggers, is uh, to reach out to people in your industry, in your niche, the influencers in your industry. I did not do that. I did not reach out to influencers in my industry for at least one and a half, two years. And had I done that, things would could have been a little bit different. My blog might have taken off even faster. It took off. It took me close to two years to uh, get to a level when I could think of making this as a full time income. But had I reached out to influencers, to people who were doing great work in this niche, in, this, in spreadsheets niche, then I could have done much better. So if you are starting out now, just make connections, just network with people, just comment on their blog post, make a relationship, and that would help you out. That may even land up a, a, an opportunity to collaborate with someone who's really big in your niche. So that's the mistake that I would advise others to avoid. Now, the good things that have happened to me since I've started uh, my blog, uh, there are quite a few. Uh, so as I said, my blog uh, took off after two years and now it gets close to 300,000 page views every month, which is uh, growing exponentially every single month. Uh, now I have a lot of social media following as well. I have close to 23, 24,000 uh, people on my Facebook page. I have close to 17, 18,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And these are people who are really engaged, who would comment on the stuff that I would put. So uh, these are some good things that have happened. I was also able to uh, offer my own online paid courses. So I have more than 500 students in my paid courses. And uh, I'm thankful that I'm now making close to uh, a five figure income every month and hopefully looking forward to a six figure year uh, next year. So those are the good things that have happened. There are a couple of additional things that that happened uh, after I started my blog after close to a year. Uh, somehow Microsoft uh, came to know about the blog and I was recognized as uh, one of the Excel MVPs, that is uh, the most valuable professional for Excel. So I was recognized by Microsoft and that made me uh, one of the two people in India to have that kind of recognition and one of the hundred odd people in the world. And that really lent credibility to anything I do if I 
reach out to anyone being a, being a Microsoft MVP really helps so that's something really good that happened it also helps me in in uh, establishing my my authority in this niche and uh, selling more online courses uh, another thing that has happened uh, over the years is that my blog has been recognized by many different blogs and many different uh, websites as one of the best Excel blogs in the world. So people or companies would uh, randomly pick my blog as one of uh, the best resources to learn Excel. And this has happened uh, over the years just because I have been consistent in writing tutorials and creating videos uh, every single week. Uh, one tip that I would give new bloggers is to focus on a niche, not uh, cast a very wide net, but try and focus on one specific niche and then identify uh, where your audience is hanging out. So for example, if you are, let's say a finance blogger, then I wouldn't recommend you talk about everything under the sun, but rather talk about only mutual funds or only equity or only property or only gold funds anything specific one pick one niche and focus on that niche channel all your energy in that specific niche and then also identify where your audience is hanging out maybe it's a reddit community or maybe it's a facebook group or maybe it's youtube or maybe they are they are finding these these blogs through uh, search engines so just identify where your audience hang out and focus your energy on those specific channels don't try and cover everything uh, such as let's say pinterest or facebook or reddit or stumble upon don't try and focus your energy on all these mediums just focus on those mediums that you think uh, would be helpful in getting the kind of audience that you have and try and niche down. Do not uh, try and cover a lot of things. So that is what I would recommend as my tip for new bloggers. I think uh, that's it. I've covered uh, most of the questions. Uh, thank you again, uh, problogger.com team and Darren. I have been a huge fan and I have learned so much from you every week. I look forward to your podcast and I hope that you'll continue to do this great work in many, many years to come. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good day. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Thanks so much, Sumit. Uh, that is just brilliant. Uh, I love hearing the stories. I love hearing the different accents. I love hearing the different experiences. And I love hearing some of the overlap there between uh, that story and Paul's story as well, both in terms of topic, Microsoft bloggers. Who would have thought uh, we would have got two Microsoft bloggers submit, but also uh, some similar experiences there, both being recognized by Microsoft. couple of things there that I loved in what uh, was said, pushing past those negative comments um, I love what he said. It didn't stop him. I moved on and I did not stop were the words there. Um, don't let those pushbacks and, and the negativity of others stop you. Um, it could have stopped Summer in his tracks and his life would have been remarkably different today. You know, all of us, every single full-time blogger that I've ever met has had something like that happen in the early days of their blog. It might be a negative comment on social media. It might be a negative comment on the blog. It might be a friend who doesn't get what we're doing. It might be a technical challenge. It might be a, a fear or a doubt. It might be something else. In the scheme of things, it's relatively small. You know, someone leaving a negative thing, but it can become all-consuming and it can be the type of thing in those early days of starting a blog where you are feeling a bit fragile, you're feeling a bit vulnerable. It's the type of thing that could quite easily stop you in your tracks. If it does, you never will know where things could have ended up. And I'm so glad that Sumit pushed past that. And I want to encourage those of you who are thinking of starting a blog, um, doing this course that we've got coming up, to not allow those things to stop you in your tracks. Uh, and one of the best things that you can do to not allow those things to stop you in your tracks is to join with other people um, who are at a similar stage to you. And so I want to encourage you to join our Facebook group, to join the course, and we'll try and get bloggers who are starting together together in, um, to, to push past those little negative things that happen and to help each other. And that's really what this course that we've got coming up is all about. You can sign up to be notified about the course at problogger.com forward slash start a blog. 
I also love the the um, the idea of using video on the blog as well. And uh, as I was listening, uh, probably for the fourth time to that story because I love it so much, I went across to Summit's blog and uh, at TrumpXL.com and I had a look at his most recent blog posts. And every single post he writes is text, but it's also got a video. And they're three or four minute videos that illustrate what he's talking about. And there's something really amazing and powerful that happens when you can write about something, but also illustrate it. And uh, with Summit's topic and many of your topics out there, I know as well, a visual element can really bring a tutorial alive. Some people like to read, some people like and learn more when they watch. I'm one of those people. I know when I've got a technical challenge, it's one thing to read a post and to read how to do something, but it's, it really comes alive for me when I can see it. And so if you've got any kind of visual element to it um, in, and you can create video, that can really um, distinguish what you're doing from what everyone else is doing. And it can be very powerful. You'll broaden your audience and you'll you'll be much more effective, particularly if you're teaching. Um, his videos are very simple. They're just screen captures um, with him talking in a very similar way to what you just heard, um, but they do bring alive that article. And uh, the, those tips there on um, reaching out to other influencers, to making connections with other people, you're going to hear that tip again uh, in a number of future stories that we've got coming up in days ahead as well. So do take note of that. Thanks so much to Paul and to Sumit who uh, shared their stories today. You can find links to their blogs over on our show notes today at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 222. And if you are inspired to start a blog like Paul and Summit, head over to problogger.com forward slash start a blog and sign up to be notified when our start a blog course goes live. It's completely free um, and it will help you to start a blog that's not only technically set up the right way, but also uh, helps you to think through some of those foundational things to build a business around your blog and to be, become more effective in your blogging as well. Thanks for listening. Chat with you tomorrow when I've got another story from a another blogger. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Pro Blogger. If you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series, find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes. Before I go, I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to Craig Hewitt and the team at Podcast Motor who've been editing all of our podcasts for some time now. Podcast Motor have a great range of services for podcasters at all levels. They can help you to set up your podcast, but also offer a couple of excellent services to help you to edit your shows and get them up with great show notes. Check them out at podcastmotor.com.